there and welcome to the Discipline of Discipleship, where we look at some of the disciplines that it takes to be a disciple. In recent weeks, we've really been looking at what it takes to focus in, to discern what's right, and to know the season that we are facing and how we should maintain to be a disciple in this time. I want to keep looking at that throughout this Discipline of Discipleship series because I think it's so significant that at this moment we are finding ourselves needing to stand up for the truth and to be able to discern the season that we're in. Now part of that is knowing how to set our minds on things that are above, to realise that we've been set apart, that we're different because God has called us out and chosen us. In this time, we we can get so distracted by some events that are going on around the world and forget that God is in control and that he is sovereign, but also that he set us apart to make us different. That there are those that he called and those that he's chosen and a disciple sits in that category, in that place of being different. Being able to look at the world in a different way to those that are also trying to work out what's going on. (laughs) It's interesting that we sit in the middle of a pandemic because pan, again, reminds us that it's about fear, panic. And our response has to be different to that. In Philippians, it says, do not be anxious about anything, anything that doesn't leave us to have any purpose or time or, or situation or struggle that allows our feelings to be anxious. Let me differentiate that from anxiety because anxiety is a medical condition. But if we choose to look at situations and get anxious about them, we're going against that command. That section of Philippians starts with rejoicing always. And then it tells us to do not be anxious about anything because then the peace of God will fill our hearts and our minds and that's what we need in this time it follows on in that part of philippians to tell us where to direct our thinking and my word for this week is filter now life is presented to us through a filter on social media in reality um very often when we can look at things that are shared on social media they come with a filtration we only get to see certain things the headlines the the things that we want the narratives that we want to to look at it's a bit like watching a sports match or a football football game and you focus on one player and one player only Um, and it's their performance and their the things that they do will affect the way that you look at that event happening. If you focus your camera on one particular person during that match, then the way that you think that match goes will just be seen through that one camera lens. And it's important for us to to know the whole picture. And that's why we uh, choose to be educated, to look at things, to to really seek the truth and find out what is actually going on. But I can find that without that filtering process and without being able to objectively look at all things, we then become bombarded with an overload of information. And without a mind that has been transcended, that is filled with the peace of God, we then can find ourselves distracted and and unable to filter out what is bad, what is not healthy, what is going to take us away from God. But in reality, without spending time with God and seeking Him, then we're unable to hear from Him and apply the filter correctly. Now, I know that sounds quite complicated, but when life is lived without a filter, we pretty much find ourselves chasing after the wind of every doctrine. Anything that comes our way without that filtration process, without filtering it, will take anything. 
And that's how Christianity and the church has changed in many years because it listens to the ideas of man. And then because of the way it's cleverly filtered and presented, we are following man's ways. Remember a few weeks ago we talked about applying the word and filtering the word, maybe in without the context of the passage. You take the text out of the context, you just get a con, or you just get text. But you need context in all things. And when, when the Bible has been given to us, when the word of God has been shared with us, it is without filtering in some ways. We need it all. All scripture is God-breathed and useful. That's what it says in 2 Timothy. And that's true. We need it all. We don't need to filter the word of God, but when we are presented with an abundance of information, we need to line it up with the word of God. Now, I want to speak about this. I know this sounds very complicated in a way, but in a sense of that we take the word of God as our foundation and the thing that we need. And then we, we try and look at see how our lives fits onto that. And I've used this illustration before in talking about conservatism and liberalism. Now that, that sounds um, a very deep thought, but it's an important one for us to understand. Now let me, let me show you this. So the word of God is up here and generally our lives are down here. You know, we, we, we see that the level that God wants us to be at, the way we live our lives, the demonstration of Jesus is there. And we are, we're not there. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, if we take a conservative approach to scripture, a fundamental evangelical approach to scripture, we find our lives and we bring it up to that standard. So that God uses our lives and pulls us to be in a place where we live out the life of the Bible, that we follow the commands that he gives. A liberal approach to scripture and to the word of God takes the Bible and tries to fit it on top, to fit our narrative um, and to make us, make the way that we live our lives, sorry, make the word try and fit it and so it fits in that way. Now me, I'm, I'm an evangelical conservative in the way that I treat scripture. So when I see a part of my life that doesn't fit, I need to do stuff to change that. I need to allow the Holy Spirit to change me and refine me. I cannot read a word and try and change it to fit my narrative. And that happens quite a lot. For example, when we see a word, maybe this, this sounds, Hard because it's so important for so many people, but for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. And I've said this before. So that's an important verse for so many people. It's a favorite. But just remind you to read Jeremiah 29, 10 and see the context of when that word was shared. Now, I'm gonna let you read that yourself and take the context. If you don't know Jeremiah 29, 10, then you filtered Jeremiah 29, 11 to make it possibly fit to give you hope. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't give us plans to prosper, to give us a hope and a future. But as I train disciples and want people to come for the next season, I want to look at the lives of those that he called, the 11 apostles that following Jesus meant death. I wonder whether they were so fixated on one particular verse of how God was going to prosper them and give them a hope and a future. Or well, they knew that before that promise was fulfilled, there was a period 
of persecution of living in captivity outside of freedom. How often we filter, how much we want to filter, means that we don't get the full picture. Somebody posting brilliant pictures and great uplifting statements on social media is often hiding the struggles and the difficulties to present a picture of what they want the world to see. <laughs> and that's how we must treat all the information that's coming out at the moment. Don't realise, well realise, sorry, just how filtered it has been. Try and pursue getting the full picture and then not let your mind be corrupted by that full picture. Turn it all over to God. Filter. Filtering can be good for our minds if we get rid of everything that isn't what God wants us to absorb. But we must still choose to filter the information that we are presented with. Or watch out, sorry, for the filter. And know what the whole picture is. God is in control. He is sovereign. He has given us all we need for this season. But he's caused us to be wise. And to know the full picture. The complete context. We should be accepting the word of God without filter. Without diluting it without pollution because that is the truth and only that truth will set us free. I believe knowing about the filter that's presented to us and the way we must filter, that's a discipline of a disciple.